Welcome to the Hogan Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. The chaos of early signing day continues. Paperwork has come in for George McIntyre, Travis Smith, the Son Brain, Ethan Utley, Marion Dye, Radarius Jackson. The only real casualty, casualty that we've suffered up to this point is three-star defensive lineman Darian Smith flipped his commitment to Auburn. Didn't come as a real surprise. We've talked about that throughout the course of the morning. Uh, not somebody that Tennessee really put up a fight for. Austin Price has said multiple times throughout the last couple of weeks that he didn't expect Darian Smith to even end up in this class, and that is the case. Shady Hayward scheduled to make his decision at 1 p.m. Eastern time. That's about five minutes from now as I'm making this video. Doesn't look like he's going to end up at Tennessee. Shady Hayward likely off to Florida. Onus Conan was another guy that we had our eyes on with Florida pushing there. I thought it was very interesting. He put out an update that he will not signed today. He's going to push that off until February. I think that's good for Tennessee. I think that gives them an opportunity to continue to recruit Onus Conan Banning and try to keep him in this class. The Vols flip three-star safety Timothy Merritt from Miami. His paperwork is officially in. Speaking of paperwork, I put out an update on David Sanders about an hour or two ago. If you missed that, you can go back and give it a watch. I'm not sure he is going to officially sign today. Now, what does that mean? I've seen a couple of different things. One, uh, his teammates are going to be having a ceremony next week. I've seen that he is going to wait and sign there. I've also seen that he's going to put pen to paper today, but it is not going to be announced officially. It is going to be coming out next week after he has the ceremony with his teammates. We are going to continue to keep you updated on early signing day. Look, you only get three notifications, so if you click that bell for notifications, you better keep your eye on the top. Talking Balls Network because we got more content coming your way today. Isaiah Campbell, four-star defensive lineman, scheduled to commit at 4.30. We will drop a video as soon as he commits. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Be ready and looking for that. And then we'll be live tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time, breaking down all the madness that is taking place with early signing day. But we have suffered another casualty to the transfer portal. A Tennessee running back is on the way out. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk about it. Just do that YouTube stuff for me real quick. Smash the thumbs up below the video. It's quick, free, easy, and it does help the channel. Uh, if it's your first time here, welcome to the Talking Balls Network. We're not experts or insiders here. We're not media. We don't break news. We talk about news. We do what fans do. We speculate. We talk about the news. Uh, so if you like it, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. You're not going to miss out when we go live or when we drop a video. But let's get into it. Let's take a look. Khalifa Keith tweets out, thank you, Vol Nation. He says, I'm forever grateful and beyond blessed for the opportunity you've given me to call myself a Vol. After much consideration, I would like to announce I will be entering the transfer portal on December 9th with three years of eligibility left. Says this has been a difficult decision, but I feel it's the right one in order for me to continue chasing my athletic and academic goals. I'm blessed to have met and built lifelong relationships with my brothers and coaches that would last a lifetime. I'm excited to see where my journey goes from here. This to everyone who has been a part of the journey this far go Vols. So Khalifa Keith now joins Bison Lang as the second player that announced their intentions to enter the portal. And look, we're going to see more of this. We're going to see more guys entering the portal. We've already seen and speculated earlier in the week about Tennessee going to be one of the big spenders in the portal this offseason. So what that means is you're going to also see guys out the door. And look, man, don't come in here and hate on these kids for trying to make a better decision for themselves, for their future. It's not always about money. Sometimes it's about playing time. Sometimes it's about guys being processed out. Yes, that is just the reality of college football. So sometimes when we get mad at these kids, like a David Sanders. Some people already going at David for, for not signing today. I think sometimes we need to pump the brakes on that because it's also a business, and a guy like Khalifa Keith could be processed out. Guys in recruiting cycles could be processed out. You never know what is going on behind the scenes, but Khalifa Keith did play in four games this season, uh, ended the year with 21 carries, 100 yards, and a touchdown, averaged 4.8 yards per carry. I know I like – shout out Nelson. I know Nelson's probably watching this video. I know a tear. A tear rolled down Nelson's eyes when he saw that Khalifa Keith was going to be entering the portal. 
I liked Khalifa Keith. I just didn't see what maybe some other people saw in him. I don't think he was as elite as some of the other running backs in the room. But again, no, no, no hate towards Khalifa Keith. I wish him the best of luck wherever he ends up. But now where does Tennessee go from here? When you look into the running back room, well, I would first go look at the guys coming in in the class of 2025. Dwane Morris, Tennessee flipped him from USC, 5'10", 180 pounds out of Murfreesboro. I get it, three-star prospect, three-star use. Some people don't like that, but if you put on the tape, he is electric. He's got speed. He's got shiftiness. I think he's got good vision. I think he is a playmaker. Also, three-star running back Justin Baker out of Buford, Georgia, 5'9", 200 pounds. Again, three-star U. And I always go back. Always We have these questions. We have these conversations. Does Josh Heupel have to recruit an elite-level running back, or is the offense set up for them to have success? And when I say that, you know, it, it immediately sounds like you're disrespecting Jalen Wright, or you're disrespecting Dylan Sampson. I think both of those guys are dudes. Jalen Wright's now in the NFL. I think Dylan Sampson, after this year, is going to be off to the NFL. But you, you look at what this team has done running the football. Uh, they've led the conference in rushing yards per game the last two seasons. I think they were uh, second in the conference. Josh Eiple's first year here dropped off a little bit in 2022 to sixth in the conference in rushing yards. Uh, but you've, you've led the conference in rushing the last two years. Dylan Sampson breaking records this year. All-time single season rushing leader. Uh, All-time single season touchdown leader at Tennessee. That speaks volumes. Almost 1,500 yards on the ground for Dylan Sampson in 2024. Average almost six yards per carry 22 touchdowns so my question is who's next who's going to be that next guy out of the Tennessee running back room to make an impact to make a difference because we saw Jalen Wright do it we saw Dylan Sampson do it and, and you want to talk about three-star you and Justin Baker and Dwan Morris uh look at Deshaun Bishop I talk about him all the time. You know, he, he's another guy that I questioned along with Khalifa Keith. I said, how is this kid that's committing to Tennessee and he's got a Coastal Carolina hat and an App State hat on the table along with him? How is he going to contribute? Is he going to be a walk-on? Is he ever going to make an impact at Tennessee? Well, he's done that. I never thought uh, in this season I would be saying, man, we really need Deshaun Bishop healthy. But there were times throughout the course of the year where Dylan Sampson was 26, 27, 28 carries in a game. We needed Deshaun Bishop healthy. He ended the season with 67 carries, 433 rushing yards, averaged 6.5 yards per carry, almost a full yard per carry more than Dylan Sampson. Also had three touchdowns, but we also saw Peyton Lewis get a lot of run. Peyton Lewis averaged almost five yards per carry, had three touchdowns. Cam Seldon, I felt like, came on late, right? And he's the name that I kept kind of speculating. Is Cam Seldon going to end up in the portal? Because I feel like Cam Seldon Kind of saw Peyton Lewis take advantage of his opportunities and maybe pass him on the depth chart. But I think we've got a good one-two, maybe even one-two-three punch with Deshaun Bishop, with Peyton Lewis, with Cam Seldon. You got to keep those guys in the boat. I think you got to keep those three running backs. And then let's hope you can develop Justin Baker. Hope you can develop Dwan Morris. But again, I wanted to put out an update. I saw Khalifa Keith was in the portal, uh, sitting in front of this desk all day today, keeping you guys up to date on all the chaos of early signing day. Again, no more notifications will go out. So if you're one of those guys that relies on YouTube notifications, I'm going to be dropping a video right around 4.30 when Isaiah Campbell commits. So be on the lookout for that. And then we'll be, we will be back tonight, live 7 p.m. Eastern time, talking about all of this chaos from early signing day. We'll talk about Khalifa Keith. We'll talk about this running back room. We'll talk about the offensive line and Bison Lang. We'll talk about the college football playoff rankings live at seven. Going to be a fun, fun show. So I hope you guys will show up for that. Make sure you smash the thumbs up on the way out the door. I would greatly appreciate it. Go check out the Talking Balls merchandise, bonfire.com slash store slash Talking Balls. Also, you like what we do around here. The, the, the reason I have the opportunity to sit here on a Wednesday morning, all morning long, and bring you these updates is because of the members of this channel. So if you've been lurking in the background, you watch every video, you like what we do around here, think about hitting that join button. You can become a member of the channel, and it's just a financial contribution. It's like a monthly super chat to this channel of a dollar. You want to give more, you can give five, you can give 10, you can give it whatever level you want to give at, but those memberships are what allows this channel to continue moving forward, being the voice of the fans, not your typical media, not talking at you, we're talking with you. If you like that, think about hitting that join button uh, and helping support the channel. There's also a link in the description for the merchandise, for the memberships, for everything you need from Talking Balls. But that is going to do it for this one. This is the Talking Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. Go Big Orange.